All right, today I am I'm going to do some work on my kayak. I've got it in my office here. I've got it propped up, set up to do some work on. That way I don't have to bend over too far. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is installing my outrigger kit. Uh, you know, that's, I'm going to put links down below for everything that I got. Uh, this is the uh, outrigger bar that I got. It's basically just a one inch pipe with some pins on it and uh, comes apart in the middle. But, there's that, and then I've also got the, uh, the outriggers themselves I'm going with are, they're actually a heavy duty inflatable instead of the, uh, the floating, the, the hard plastic or foam ones they do. These are some heavy duty inflatable ones that are actually really easy to inflate. It doesn't take a whole lot of air and they're really tough and they're, they're, they're strong. I like them. Uh, they've got these two rings on there when they're inflated that goes up onto the, uh, the bar, and uh, the, those are the ones that are actually made for that bar. Uh, but uh, if you buy them all together, it's kind of expensive. It's like two hundred dollars or something for the whole kit, or one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, I bought everything separate, and it ended up coming out a little bit cheaper, roughly around a hundred dollars. And uh, the uh, the brackets that come with the bar, the there it just comes with a couple of screws and a flat metal bracket. And that, that's cool, that's designed for a specific type of kayak that has a groove for this outrigger bar. But mine doesn't have that, so I went out and I got these. These are conduit straps, they're made out of metal. They're not super strong, but they're the same kind of metal the bar is made out of, so these should work fine. I've also got some uh, uh, specially made kayak rivets. These, are, these have a rubber seal on them and they're they're coated in some kind of black paint. Uh, they're just pop rivets, regular pop rivets, but they're they're special made for a kayak. They've got a coating on them, nylon coating, and uh, yeah. And these I got 20 of them. It, it's actually cheaper to buy those with uh, plastic, uh, whatever these things are called. These things. Okay. Now, I bought a pack of 10 of these that came with 20 rivets. And these are made out of plastic. They're cheap. They're, they're fine for like nylon rope or something, but I'm not going to use these for anything. It's actually cheaper to get the rivets if you buy them with these than it is to buy the rivets by themselves. The rivets themselves were like 6 for $5, or I got a pack of 10 of those with 20 rivets for $3 or something like that. So that's what I'm going with. I've also got just a regular pop rivet gun. Not a, not a hydraulic one or an air pressure one, just a regular uh, hand tooled one. I'll show you that. That's over there where I can't reach it right now. And then I got these uh, conduit straps I already showed. Uh, these, I actually got them, they're about a quarter inch bigger than the pipe. Uh, the pipe itself, I measured it. And I'm going to have to, you know, let me just measure these again real quick. Because I measured the pipe, and the pipe's a quarter, an uh, inch and a quarter. And these are supposed to be an inch and a quarter, and they're, they're even the bag says inch and a quarter, and it's actually inch and three quarters. So these aren't exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for something, but I'm going to make these work anyway. These are, they're a little bit bigger, but I'm going to get some, uh, like a rubber seal or something to put on the inside of them that'll keep the, the bar from moving around a lot, which I wouldn't actually be able to do that if I'd just gotten the ones that actually, that were the, the right size that fit it the bar would still slide in and out real easy. So this actually gives me a little bit of breathing room to put some seal in there to keep the bar from, from moving around. Uh, I'm just gonna pop rivet two, I got four of them. I'm gonna put two on each side. So secure it like that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna run it right behind the seat in front of the, the rod holders. Get the rod holders right here, the seat. It's actually got some notches right there that you could drill out easily to put one of these things on there. But I'm not gonna use those. These are actually take up a little bit more space. But I'm gonna drill out some holes, fix them on there, on each side between the seat and the rod holders. All right, the tool I'm using, instead of using a power drill, I've got this, it's a hand drill. That, that's all I really need. I don't wanna, I don't need anything else right now. It'd be a lot easier if I had a drill, but this will work. 
Uh, trying to get myself. I've already got the hole measured out. I've got the first hole drilled. Got the holes drilled out and cleaned up, and here's my uh, rivet gun. Go ahead and pop this one into place, and then line the other ones up with it. Give it a shot. Popped it right off, and it's on there pretty securely. A little more secure than I expected it to be. Had to do it a couple times, but uh, yeah, that's actually pretty good. It's such a long rivet, I've got to pump it a couple times on here until it pops itself off. That's, that's on there pretty good. That ain't going nowhere. I actually probably don't even need two of them on there. Probably only need one, but I'm gonna go ahead and line up two on each side. Like that. Well, and when it's time to put the uh, the outriggers on, they just slide right in, and yeah, that's not gonna go anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the other ones all lined up and popped in. We'll catch up in there. All right, you can see here, I've got it. It's pretty secure. Yeah, that's not going nowhere. Get them all lined up. And uh, take the bar apart right there to get it in and out. And uh, yeah, that worked out pretty well. I could probably use it as is. It'll just slide back and forth. But uh, I'm gonna put some rubber in there, insulation or a seal or something on there to keep the, the bar from moving around too much. But I could probably use it the way it is. And uh, so, yeah, there we go. All right, so uh, what I found for a temporary solution is I found these um, rubber gaskets that are about that big around. I don't know what they're for, uh, but I had two of them, and they fit just over this they doubled up over these perfectly twice and they're nice and, st and stuck on there they don't move around too much my theory is that when the the uh, pontoons get down in the water the uh, outriggers it pushes them up and it levels out the the bar and it'll push them up and it'll keep that sticking up will keep it from sliding through on both sides there so that's the theory anyway uh, now a more reasonable solution, and not necessarily a more permanent solution, I was trying to figure out what I could use to kind of clip on here or something to keep it from sliding around. And uh, I found some uh, barbell clamps online that were pretty cheap. And they just, they go on the end of the barbell, to, to, they slide over, squeeze them to release them, let them go to tighten up. And uh, it grabs onto the end of the barbell to keep the heavy weights on and that should work ideally to I just slide it on and clip it right here and it won't go anywhere it won't move put one on each side so uh, that's I ordered some of those they haven't quite come in yet uh, I was gonna take this out and try it out today but it's just way too hot I can't do it so uh, maybe tomorrow or something but uh yeah, you'll by the end of this video, you'll see me out on the water in this. All right, uh, out here at the lake, it's been raining nonstop for like three weeks, but it finally stopped today, and the water looks like it's good. I don't see a lot of activity out there. I'm not expecting to catch any fish, but I, I've had I've been sitting on this kayak with the outriggers and everything ready to go for three weeks now. I haven't been able to try it out so. Uh, that's what I'm doing. We've got the outriggers ready to go. I got the flag up. 
Got my paddle attached over there. I'm gonna go ahead and get launched. Probably not gonna be able to hear much because just in case I'm gonna put everything in waterproof gear so the sound is gonna be muffled. So I might have to play some music over it, but we're gonna get out there and try it out right now. Now real quick, quick before I launch, uh, I have noticed that this thing is, from the first time I tried it out to the second time when I started flipping it over, it definitely seems more stable when it's fully loaded with gear. So, there we go, but when it's fully loaded and heavy, it felt more stable. When it was empty, it was flipping over easy. So I'm gonna try it out empty first, and then I'm gonna go and load up all the gear. That is amazing. That works fantastic. Yeah, wow. All right, you know what? I just took it out for like two minutes right now didn't go very far but I don't need to that thing those outriggers work amazing that thing is more stable than Greg's John boat and uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and load up everything I got on it and get out there and try to catch some fish all right I got it loaded up don't have it loaded up with a lot of gear but I got it loaded up with a small rod and anchors and stuff so, I've also got my big gulp here. These outriggers, they work very well. I made it incredibly stable. But the one thing I didn't really account for is paddling. They're kind of in the way when I'm paddling, so I can't get the full strokes. Because on the back, the back swing I hit the crossbar there but even if I had uh, taken that into account I it would have had to have been further back and it would not be as stable so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it the way it is and I'm happy with that and I'm not waterproofing the GoPro right now either so uh, yeah even without the full strokes and and the outriggers and everything still cuts through the water pretty well. I just gotta raise my hands up pretty high to get the strokes right. But yeah, this is working pretty well. I gave it an overall negative review at first, but once you put these outriggers on it, that's a this is an amazing transition. Like I, I can't even explain to you how much of how big of a difference this is. So much more comfortable. Let's just give it a shot. I'm using the cheap little uh, ultralight, four, four and a half foot ultralight today. Oh yeah, I just brushed right up against a, a down tree over here in the middle. Some drift, or some a brush pile, and it's holding me steady in place. That's pretty cool. And there's some big fish around right here too. Wow, I can actually turn around in this thing. That's crazy. Before I couldn't even look to the side without, without flipping over. Now I can turn completely around, stretch and be comfortable. In fact, right now I'm so comfortable I'm gonna have a picnic myself a couple of sandwiches out here. I'm, I'm, I don't even feel like fishing right now. I just want to enjoy this.
Uh-oh. Got some company out here. Got outlaw rowing up on me right now. Yeah, actually, this thing's worked out better than I could have hoped it would have. Look. <laughs> Yeah, I can actually, before I was, you know, if I just looked in that direction, I would flip over. Right. I can turn all the way around and move now. Oh, yeah. So. Makes the worse, right? Yeah. And the whole outrigger system probably cost me everything I put into it, maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how all my videos are now, anyway. Yeah. So the big problem is now everybody can see my torn up shoes. <laughs> uh, I told you Greg was out of Bronic right now, yeah. right? And got one on the first cast, <laughs> 30 inch. He's already got two or three at least. Yeah. I'm not, like, as fun as those things are to fight, because they're so big, I'm not sure about getting pulled a water, around in a kayak, you know? <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Yep. Not a very big one, but there we go. And it snapped off, wow. I think I got some bad eyelets on this rod. But there we go. Your good luck, man. <laughs> there we go. Close enough. Oh, now it's going to keep going off. All right, there you have it. The outriggers work. And they actually work a lot better than I thought they would. I'm really surprised at how stable this thing was. Uh, yeah, this I'm very happy with what I did. And the whole rig probably cost me about 100 bucks. Uh, everything I used, I'll put links down in the description for. So, thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, see you next time.